thing up because it's 93 in the garage and uh, we just caught the tail end of the season to get this camper at least finished enough to use the one time although not complete many people are asking me what about lights what about fenders blah 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 hey that's right i gotta finish all that stuff right yeah but i just we just wanted to try it one night and we did and it was awesome so what do you think did you have fun mm -hmm. what was your favorite part Probably the rattlesnake. Really? That was pretty cool. <laughs> a little scary too. I haven't seen, a, seen one in a long time. So what happens to water? Let's say you put a cup of water on a patio mm -hmm. and the sun hits it for an hour and you come back later. What happened to that water? It vaporizes. That's right. It vaporizes or evaporates. Oh. <laughs> You've been watching too many of these science shows. <laughs> Maybe that's a good thing. So this is called an evaporative cooler. Some people call it a swamp cooler. The reason why they call it evaporative cooler is because there's a water curtain that drips water. What to show the water curtain? Oh, that's probably a good idea. Thanks for producing our show here. So we're going to show the water curtain in action. That's the fan. It's the fan sucking the air to blow it out this side. And then that's low on the fan. Let's do the water curtain. And the water is evaporated a little bit into the air and it cools the air and spits it out here nice and cool. So that's why they call it an evaporative cooler. Does that make sense? Yeah. So now we're going to put this back in here. Do you have any idea why they call it a swamp cooler? No, actually. Well, this water that sits in this reservoir here, make sure this goes in right. It just sits in there, right? So the water can actually begin to form algae in it. And it gets a little stinky. It smells like a swamp after you've left it off for a long time and you turn it back on. We now put little chemical tablets in there to counteract that, but is it working? Yeah. Well, let's give it a test. Okay, it is. 91 there, 77, and we just fired it up, 76. So yeah, you should get about a 25 degree drop when a swamp cooler is working good and it's nice and dry out. So it's not competing with the moisture. All right, so we're gonna get back to work. Here we go. Good afternoon, everybody. It is Sunday the 5th, it's about 2.15. And uh, we're just coming back out here after last weekend. Hope you guys all enjoyed the camping, our inaugural camping video. It was definitely a lot of fun. We were really excited. What, I think without the wind, we would have been able to hang out outside on our little table and our little easy up and really enjoy the atmosphere. We were stuck in the camper the whole time because the wind was, was pretty uh, powerful and it was cold. But nonetheless, um, great memory that we recorded right there, me and my boys. So very happy with that. I did get a lot of people asking me about um, what about the fenders, you know, uh, what about the lights and I had mentioned in previous videos and maybe they just didn't pick that up that this was just to try this thing out one night because we got the doors and the windows on it. We just had to get in it and sleep in it. We could have done it in the garage or in the backyard but literally I live a, a block and a half from open desert and even though I drove several miles up that street to get to where we wanted to go. We were just eight, 10 miles from our house um, and we were fine. You know, we didn't see anybody. I think we saw one dirt biker up there and it was Sunday night. So it was not going to be anybody out. A lot of fun. Had a lot of fun with that night. So there's still so much to do. Um, I'm having an issue with the bearings. Uh, some of you guys in the last video saw that I had, I had mated um, the bearing from an aftermarket hub with a bearing from the Harbor Freight Hub to try to get rid of um, a lot of play that I could not get out even if I tighten that axle nut all the way there was still a lot of play and I was able to tighten it to where you couldn't move the wheel and back it off till it was free with no play well after driving it around for a little bit I'm stuck now because if I rotate the, ax the axle nut one turn to get to the next hole for the cotter pin it becomes too tight if I come back just one spot on the castle nut to get the cotter pin in then I get play so 
the bearings are Mickey Mouse. So today I'm going to tear that apart and just try to see if I can, I have other bearings here at the house. I've got like six sets of hubs here. See if I can make it work. If not, I'm going to just wipe out one big problem with one stone because I don't like the leaf springs. They have a mount on the front and then they just bent and they rest right on the axle steel like the old time trailers do. I would like to have spring hanger bolts at both ends. So for like 150 bucks, I can get an axle that will take the five lug hub, no play, bearings will work, I can weld in new spring hanger brackets, put all new stuff under there, I can move the axle back, I could go back, I think I'd go back about six inches uh, just to make the weight distribution a little more forward since I have stuff hanging off the back and it would give me the option to put another rack off the back for firewood and stuff. Probably going to be the way I go. Even though in the very first video I recorded last September, I said we're going to do the cheapest, the easiest way. Here we are. So, also, uh, a couple things. You know, I picked this up a while back when I was intending on doing a sink. And you can see how it works in this little clip here. Uh, it's meant for boats. You know, you go into the head and there's like that little sink. You pump and you wash your hands. This would be perfect somewhere. I kind of wish I would have made this area bigger more far forward for a deeper sink etc and a tank I'm gonna figure this out eventually today I'm gonna to hang this light that's gonna go on the driver's side of the camper yeah, as you saw in the video there was just wire hanging there because I needed one more I'll get that done today this stuff right here for all the lap joints on top where the vent is up here I'm gonna go ahead and squirt the stuff all around the edges and around all the screws this die core self leveling stuff is the best for that on the roof I also have some window tint for the windows because it became an oven in here even in the cold weather when the sun was shining in those windows without any covering we're going to tint the windows we're going to make some curtains probably not today maybe this won't be today i'm going to do the light today i want to check out the bearings today probably going to do this today and then i noticed a couple areas on the coating where i could go back over with a fifth coat of the smooth just to seal it a little bit better and then in the future as we go forward, yep, I got to do the fenders. I got to get the lights on here. Um, we got to paint or diamond plate the bottom one quarter of the body all the way around. You know, we're still kind of throwing that one up in the air. Not sure yet. I still have a whole lot of the black uh, Herculiner from doing the bottom of the deck. I could just easily knock out the bottom of this thing in black like the picture. So I'm not sure. But there's so much more to do. I gotta extend the frame off the front, build a deck there for the Jenny, for water tank, for tools. Again, dropping the weight forward. So there's a lot to do. We are going into the heat season now, the hot season here in the desert where it's already 93 in my garage. It's the hottest day in the garage since we started this in September. So we got the little swamp cooler going and uh, I intend to increase the cooling capacity in the garage by getting another swamp cooler that actually works the whole area and I can close the garage and set some lights up and do what I need to do. Anyway, that's about five minutes of talking. Uh, enough said. I hope you guys all enjoyed the videos. Somehow in the last week like 60 people subscribed so welcome aboard everybody. It's kind of cool to see so many people that that uh, like this little project stuff. I know I like watching other guys project stuff so if you're doing one of these or anything like this DIY homemade stuff do a vlog so we can all watch. Love to see more of this stuff at home. So here we go. So I went ahead and found this rain gutter that was hanging up there I forgot about and uh, I put this in that's nice and then you saw me I put this trim in here to cover up those screws and then I also have an interior uh, frame deal that's going to go on the inside once I figure out what to do with the sill area around that so got that done. So I just spent the last about half hour trying all these different hubs, different bearing combinations, and um, the only hub that fits perfectly where you can adjust it snug and then back it off, have zero play, and then uh, it's free spinning is the four lug Harbor Freight welded up little one piece hub. And the reason is, is it's thinner inside, so the smaller bearing goes in deeper 
and it pinches it together and it rests perfectly and then you can adjust the snugness you know um, where it should be the aftermarket hub underneath here that I'm using it's a five lug hub uh, the only bearing that works is the bearing that came with that hub but the problem is is this hole that you put your cotter pin through if this were 25 percent further around then this hub would work but if I go all the way snug where it's just a hair too tight no play and put the cotter pin in it's way too tight if I back it off one little notch in the castle nut for the cotter pin it's nice and free but then it's too loose so there's just there's there's no happy middle ground so what I'm going to do temporarily is put a washer on this side of the castle nut hoping that the little notch for the cotter pin ends up in a different space in a different place with that little extra width that's going to be my temporary solution so uh, makes a lot of sense that maybe I should have started with a bigger beefier trailer but I thought I was in love with the idea of this little $200 Harbor Freight trailer and let's let's turn this thing into something cool and it's going to be cool, but um, for me to feel good about it and to tow it on long distances, like I'd like to go to Mammoth, I'd like to go to other places, I don't want to have to think about Mickey Mouse-ness. So that's it for Saturday. I'm going to see if I can find some washers, um, different thicknesses, some shims, you know, with the one-inch diameter, and see if I can play with where the castle nut ends up in relation to the tightness of the bearing. So we're out for Saturday. Thanks for watching. Good morning, everybody. It is Saturday, the 12th of May, and we've got an unusually cool day uh, for late spring in the high desert. So we're going to take advantage of that today and try to get some work done. Really, really busy week this week. Super tired today, but um, I got to see if I can get these bearings done right. If I can't get these bearings to tighten the way they should be tightened, then I got no other option than to um, swap out the axle and leaf springs and stuff like we talked about. I did some research this week. They're cheap. The axle's cheap. Leaf springs are cheap. But it would mean lifting this thing, ripping the old stuff off, um, you know, grinding everything off of it, re-welding the spring hangers and doing all that. And I've done it before on a couple other trailers. So not a big deal. Just time consuming. So um, anyway, this is what my toolbox looks like after you know a couple days of working after work trying to get stuff done I had to put a swamp cooler in our house this this season last season the AC they have on this house which is a rental kind of kept it cool but I think that that AC ran literally 24 hours a day for over six weeks never shutting off uh, keeping the house at about 76 the whole time uh, it was a little expensive and I've got a lot of experience with evaporative coolers, swamp coolers like the one we just you just watched me and my kids set up for last weekend here when it was hot in the garage. Now it's only in the 60s, so it's really nice. So here's a couple pictures of that project. Ripped out a window, stuck it in there, and uh, the thing works like a champ. Turn it on in the morning, keeps the house at about 73 when it's about 95 outside. So it's working good. Anyway, so enough of that talking. Today I'm going to see if I can get these bearings set up right, and we'll just go from there. All right, so I think I got it figured out. So that was the washer that came with the hub that goes on the outside of the bearing between the castle nut and the bearing. I bought this extra one. This is thicker than that one, and this one's thinner than that one. So the first thing I tried was I used the stalker and I backed it up with this thinner one, and it was better, definitely, but the, the, the nut was still really loose. I just didn't like that. So I took off the stalker, took off the thick one and I put just the thin one so I got an extra turn out of it 
and the nut ends up getting snug and then it lines up perfectly and there's absolutely zero zero play in there at all and it, and it spins really free so now I'm gonna pack it full of grease throw her back together and tackle side two so I'm just eyeballing the fenders right now um, got the bearing deal solved took four or five tries each wheel back on and off on and off but the bearing mystery solved uh, zero play free spinning worked out okay so first we're gonna get the trailer level see right there and then I'm just gonna eyeball these and then hey buddy what are you doing that's cool <laughs> and then <laughs> didn't see that there did you yeah. and then we'll get these level see you know we'll play with these until we can Get these puppies. That magnet's strong. And then somehow we're going to fix those in place. They look a little small to me. I mean, they're doing the job there, right? I guess I don't want them too big, so we have clearance to get in the door. And then I want to have some kind of shelf back here. Put my toolbox right here. Uh, put water right here. Something else right here. So this, these act as a little bit of a table. You can sit down, put your dirt bike gear on. It's level. Yeah, good, huh? So we're playing with that right now. The problem I'm having is the tire is much wider than the fender. So I could just slide the fender out. But then the problem is when I go to put something against the back of the fender to protect the camper from all the stuff slinging around up in here if we get into some rain right I don't want the camper body exposed to the tire and the water and the dirt flying around in here so I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a wall back here that's attached to the back of the fender here so that this is protected got it so if I were to slide the fender out out this way you know to cover that wall is gonna rub the sidewall in here so i can either just get some wider ones i think that's the easiest way to do it <laughs> almost fell off the back <laughs> 